Hi everyone, this is Mr. West. Normally on this channel, I do high school mathematics videos and tutorials. Today I'm taking a break from that to talk about a really cool website called Social Blade. Social Blade is linked with YouTube. They get real-time data. And it's a really cool uh, site for creators to use to kind of see how they're doing. So there's a bunch of different statistics that you can look at on this website. I'm gonna cover specifically subscribers. But if you wanna see my earnings, I'm actually kind of flattered because uh, I make zero dollars, not one to 22 for monthly. So really flattered they think I actually make some money. Um, you have to hit reach 1,000 subscribers for the record. Uh, and so you can see just some different statistics, monthly gain videos and subscribers. You can see I had a little bump. I'm in my summer lull right now. Summer's usually a pretty low month for me. But this is the main thing I wanna talk about in this video is future projections. Obviously predicting the future for views and subscribers is an extremely difficult task. And uh, I like checking it though to kind of see how I'm doing and if I'm on track to reach my 1000 subscriber mark. That's really my goal. And as you can see here, I wonder if I can zoom in. Yes, I can. In one year and 10 months, I'm gonna read. So in, in June of 2023. Well, I don't like that. That's pretty far away. And the reason why I think that's far away is because back in May, I looked at this and it said I would reach it within a year. And I was pretty excited about that. So I wanted to find out, well, what happened? Why did my, sorry about that. Why did my projected subscribers go way down? So let me break this down. Going into Google Sheets, I've already copied and pasted this data into, uh, let me get this on track here, into a chart. And you can see that I did three different charts here on May 20th. That's the one I'm talking about. Those are my subscribers. So within a year, that's 24 months. I well over, well, within a year, sorry, 12 months, well over, well, a little over a thousand subscribers. That was my goal. And then these other projections are 20 months. And this one, uh, a few days, a few weeks later is 22 months. So much further away. And I was like, what the heck is going on? And I'm sure other YouTubers look at these analytics and they're like, what's going on? How am I doing? I'm sure they have some of these same conversations. So this is the first one, okay? This is on May 20th. I, I graphed it, ran regression on it, and you can see that the regression model has R squared value equal to one. That means it's a perfect model. And it makes sense because there are models that they use. They created this data. So their model obviously needs to be 100% accurate to what they're projecting. And so that's why you see that R squared of one. And then you can get an idea of what kind of graph this creates. And I'm not breaking down the equation, but you can see that that's a great trend. That's exponential growth. And exponential growth is it lends to the term viral for a video. Obviously, viruses see exponential growth, meaning it's going to grow very, very quickly. Now, you'll notice too, I calculated the percent change in total subscribers for two months right at that project, uh, projection on May 20th. And I had a 38% increase in subscribers during that two month period before the projections. So I thought that was part of the process because they give projections every two months. Now, July 28th projection, you'll see, look at it. It was much different. It looks like a straight line, but it has an equation. So I was like, okay, it's got a, it's got a, a polynomial equation. So it's got, maybe it's just a really slow parabola. Okay. 21% change over two months. And then again, this is in my summer, like low period, 19% change. And again, it looks very, very flat. So I was like, you know what? Let me go through and check out some other channels. So you can see here, I checked out some other, one con, obviously I gotta give them some love. I do a lot of videos based on them. And I did the same thing here. I put in the data for their future subscription. This was on August 18th. And you can see that both of these are exactly the same. They have R squared equals one, means perfect fit. But look at this one. This top one's linear. I put linear instead of polynomial, and it's a perfect fit. So it's projected to increase at about 68,000 subscribers per month, which is pretty good. I wish I had 68,000 subscribers per month. But that's what it's it's projected at. But the, only the two-month sub uh, subscription percent change was 1.3. That's super duper small compared to my... Percent of 30. So I'm like, what the heck? I had 30% growth over a two month period, but you know, I had exponential growth and then it was linear. And then con is linear. What's going on? So here's another YouTube channel. This is based off of uh, Social Blade. You go to similar channels and this and that. 
well, this is a really, I, I've, I know about this channel. It's a really popular growing channel. And so I found, I, I plotted uh, its future projections. And you can see that it had 2.5% um, two month uh, subscription percent change. But look at the model here. When I put a linear regression model, it didn't fit. The R squared value went down. It's not 100% accurate now. So what's going on there? Well, it's exponential. So this one had exponential growth, even though it only had 2.5% change. So I did this a couple other times, and one other one was John Boy Media. They're, they're a really fast-growing channel. So you can see in 24 months, it's they're going to more than quadruple their size, according to these projections. It would be great for John Boy Media, but we'll see if it actually happens. They had a much higher two-month percentage change. So I was wondering if that percentage change over two-month period made a difference. As you can see, I had RT Game. They're a gaming, so a different type of variety. We had, you know, pop culture, sports, and then the gaming. And this one was projected linear, even though they he already has about 2.5 million subscribers. So what is going on? Why are sometimes it's exponential and other times it's linear? So as you can see here, here's Khan Academy. And one thing I learned as I went through this, I didn't have to plot the data. I could just look at the charts here. And you can see that both these are linear both for future subscribers and future video views. And that's for Khan Academy. You go over here to, let me just X this out, Fairbairn Films. These guys are really funny, by the way. Um, both of their views and subscribers are projected to, for exponential growth. But why? That's the question I really was curious about. So if we go over here to detail, the detailed section, you can do this for any, you can look up anybody in it's real time stats. It's pretty cool, I like this website. This is their weekly subscribers gained for um, their channel. And then you can see total subscribers over time, and it's just growing, growing. It looks like they're growing at a steady rate. But their weekly subscribers is very much cyclical. So I was like, what is going on? I mean, not very indicative. There's no like clear signs there. So another channel that I know about, this is a really great home building channel. Um, they have less than a million. I thought there was a threshold. Maybe over a million subscribers, you only have to get over 2% for it to go into exponential growth. But that's not the case here. This is, uh, like I said, Wild Wonderful Off-Grid uh, Home Building Channel. They had 4.69% growth over two months, but yet their video views are exponential and their subscribers are not. It's a linear model for their subscribers. And that puzzled me. If you go to their summary, you can see that they really had a breakout year at the start of COVID, and then it kind of slowed down a little bit. So I wonder if that is part of that process. But very interesting to me what uh, designates exponential growth for subscribers versus not. I couldn't pinpoint it exactly just based on this. Now, I went over to similar channels. Pokemon Trash, it's a channel in, in France, apparently. And you'll see that it has exponential growth. But when I did a two-month period of how its subscribers changed over two-month period, it was only 1.2%. So that to me was not fitting the pattern of why they're projected for exponential growth and something like Wild Wonderful Off-Grid is not. And as you can see, that has a little bit more peaks than I guess Wild Wonderful Off-Grid. And you can see in about between May and July of 2021, this current year, that had a little bit of a bump, and I wonder if that contributed to that. So really kind of not fitting any sort of uh, narrative there. And then I went to top 50 lists, and this was a top 50 channel on gaming. I'm not a gamer myself, but I respect it. Um, and I picked this one because it had 111,000 subscribers and only 74,000 views how do you have more subscribers than views that's a different thing entirely but you can see if you go to future projections its subscribers are projected as exponential but the views are linear and there's more if you go to detailed statistics this is where you can see total subscribers over time it's actually projected no it's actually been decreasing so the subscribers have been decreasing since september of 2020 and yet they're projected to grow exponentially. This is where I think Social Blade actually has a problem with their algorithm. And this guy just kind of sneaked into the top 50 uh, without them knowing is they, they don't take like the absolute value of the change. They just see this change 
this uh, negative change over time. And there's like, oh, there's a change over time. They're taking the absolute value of that change and it's turning into a positive projection when really this should be a downward trend. I don't even know if this guy's active anymore. Uh, we can even see like recent videos and stuff like that. Like if I go to, um, you can see he posts, actually, yeah, he does post videos still. No, it doesn't look like he is. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell just from this, but it is easier to, you can take a look at the website. But for my intents and purposes, we're done with this guy. He had negative percent of gro growth, but the model was exponential. So we're gonna switch over to my go-to. If you've been on this channel before, you know I like using Notability. Social Blade, can it predict future YouTube subscribers? Well, it all depends. Is it linear or exponential? And that's the kind of the key is, okay, what factors uh, go into 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 determining that um is it percentage increase we already talked about in the past few months i would say no it's not we've already determined that this is not the case okay it's definitely not that is it a percent increase in subscribers uh with separate thresholds like if you're over a million is the percentage different no i i determined that was not the case is it recent video success is it long-term growth of the channel factoring the channel age country of origin channel type fluctuations maybe not country of origin maybe channel type, but I really think it has to do with the age of the channel, the fluctuations in the video views, and really I think these, uh, this one plays a real big uh, factor in that. And the reason why I think this is a reason is because if you go back into my videos or my projections in May 20th, I had a recent spike based on my uh, video, if I can go back here, Okay, um, I had a spike. Actually, I need to go to my YouTube analytics. You're gonna. This is like looking in my bedroom, you know, kind of. I hope it's clean type of thing. So it's loading right now. But if we go into, so here's my subscribers for its lifetime. As you can see, in June 2020, it was flat because summer months. And then in March 2021, I released a video that was kind of popular. I don't know why it was that popular, but it was the Shack video, and that is why I think. I was projected for exponential growth. Um, and you can kind of see more of that in the user summary. So right here, you can see I had a big spike in total subscribers weekly. And I think that was because of that recent success. So that's why when I go over here, recent video success I, has got to be in the equation. I think long-term growth of the channel is in the equation. The age of the video is in the equation. Um, but if you're more of a cyclical, like the Fairburn films, where they have these videos that get really popular really fast, that's when it's gonna be exponential growth versus linear. Some of these steady people that have a lot of subscribers, but it's really the same people watching, that would be like the wild, wonderful, off-grid type people. So overall, I think Social Blade does a really good job. They, it's hard to predict uh, what's going to be popular, what's going to happen in the country, in the world, um, what is region specific, uh, who has summers, summer uh, kind of a, a low period like I do. It's hard to predict all that. So they do a really good job of factoring all these things to get something that's pretty spot on. Like, for example, let's go back to these projections and then I'm going to end this video. It's already a little long. So May 20. It predicted that I was going to have, in four months time, 361. I'm almost there. It's very close. So um, I think four months from May, but it's May, June, July, August, September. Yeah, so I'm almost to 361 subscribers, almost there. You can help me out by hitting the subscribe button. But uh, it's pretty accurate so far for me. I know other people have said that it's pretty accurate for them. Um, in terms of my <laughs> monthly salary, that's a different st story. I'm not there yet. So big fat zero, you can pencil me in. But really, uh, I just wanted to talk about uh, the projected models of Social Blade, how it's pretty good. And I'd be curious to know with from you guys, what is it that determines whether it's exponential linear? What factors do they use? Obviously, they're the ones that have the systems and the equations, but that'd be something really cool to know. And it's kind of cool that it incorporated some math. So there's your math connection there. That's all the time I have for today. I hope to see you next time right here on West Explains Best.